First, live, local. This is Fox 12 Now. Hello, everyone. This is Fox 12 Now. I'm Greg Nibbler. Thank you for joining us. That is a live look there from Lincoln City with our Chinook Winds camera taking a look there at the Oregon coast where not there a bit further south, more like Coos Bay, so a ways further south. There was an earthquake off of the Oregon coast here earlier today, and that's what we're going to be talking about here. And uh, we want to get you this information. I've got our expert joining us, Harold Tobin from the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. And, uh, and you know, really appreciate you having some time to join us to talk about this today. And, you know, for everybody watching, if this is the first you've heard of this, there, there is no tsunami warning, so we don't have anything like that. But we did want to explain what was going on with this earthquake. It does seem like a rather large one. It was located about 180 miles off of Coos Bay at about a six-mile depth. And to go through all of that, Harold, uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Can you tell us, you know, I uh, guess a little bit more about this specific earthquake that just happened earlier today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as you said, it's about magnitude six. I think it's been refined to 6.0. Um, that's larger than we typically see in that region, although it's not at all unprecedented. This same zone, almost exactly the same spot, actually about 200 miles off the uh, southern coast of Oregon, uh, saw 6.3 in 2019 and other earthquakes bigger than six uh, not long before that. Um, the region is a spot that's very interesting from the point of view of plate tectonics offshore. Um, it's not the Cascadia subduction zone, important thing to say. It's actually where the Juan de Fuca plate meets the Pacific plate further offshore of our coast and different from the place where the two plates are converging under North America. So further off, so that's an, is this a spot that's frequent, that frequently has earthquakes? It really does, yeah. If we, uh, if we say how often does it have earthquakes bigger than magnitude five, they come every few months literally out there. Um, we generally don't feel them on shore, so they don't get much notice. They don't make the news normally. Um, this one a little bit just because the magnitude is a little bit larger than we've seen in the last five years. Um, I want to reemphasize, really, it's not something to worry about, and it's not directly linked to the Cascadia subduction zone. But it is a reminder of just how active plate tectonics really is, especially off our shore here in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, and this is something that your organization obviously monitors and, and keeps track of. So typically, you know, with this, this being a 6.0 uh, 6, uh, 6 earthquake, as you mentioned, that it was refined to, um, how frequent are these earthquakes that are taking place down there? Yeah, in that kind of region, um, we see a six sort of every few years on average, if you go back through the last 20 or 30 years. Um, and again, we see magnitude four and five earthquakes just constantly. They're happening, you know, as often as every month um, if for magnitude four and below, even, even much more often than that. Um, it's a long way offshore, so it's a long way outside our actual network of our local detectors. Um, but uh, because of the magnitude at six, actually, uh, even seismometers quite far away can detect it. In fact, it triggered some seismometers in central Oregon um, to sort of get a false alarm of a possible magnitude four that fortunately was nipped in the bud before it really became um, uh, widespread you know, information, um, only because the seismic waves got to those seismometers in, in way out in the middle of Oregon. So. Wow, so that is that is going a long ways then when it comes down to that. So for for these plates off of there, and just to reiterate for anybody, so you got, you mentioned the Wanda Fuca plate, and then this is the other plate. How are they interacting? And in the long term, is there any kind of a concern with this particular plate where this earthquake is? Yeah, so the place where this earthquake happened could see larger earthquakes, probably not much bigger than um, somewhere between 6.5 and maybe 7 or a little bit higher than 7. The thing that's interesting about that spot is that the plates are moving kind of side by side as opposed to kind of thrusting up or down. And why that's important is that even quite large earthquakes, if they're that side by side movement, um, tend not to produce tsunamis because they don't displace the seafloor. And, you know, it's it's the pushing up or the dropping down of the seafloor that creates tsunamis. So um, this kind of earthquake is a friendly one from the point of view of tsunami hazard. And of course, just because it really is sort of at that distance of 180, 200 miles offshore. It's not very likely to shake anybody very hard at all. So this one seems like uh, this this plate, this section where this is happening is of lesser concern than maybe something like the Wanda Fuca plate. Yeah, lesser concern than the other side of the Wanda Fuca plate, which is getting us to the what we call the Cascadia subduction zone, the place where that plate is sliding underneath. Yeah. Uh, Oregon, Washington, Northern California, that's where we have the concern of an earthquake that, first of all, would shake people 
strongly on the coast and second would potentially produce a tsunami. Both of those obviously are real hazards that we're concerned about. So we monitor the offshore very carefully to look at these different types of earthquakes and recognize that they are all ultimately part of the plate tectonics, but have different meanings and different uh, potential hazards for us. Fortunately, this one is a, a not hazardous type of event, but we do learn a lot about how the plates are moving from studying these kind of earthquakes. And understanding what's going on there could have, you know, and understand, help understand, I would imagine, on the other side as well. Absolutely, yeah. And so we have to monitor all the time, and we're always trying to increase our ability to monitor the offshore regions so that we know what's happening. And if a big change in the pattern of earthquakes is taking place, for example, that we're aware of it, and that we can produce the uh, early warnings that people may have heard of shake alert and the possibility of getting a, a warning to your mobile device, um, uh, which only works because we have the monitoring stations in place to do that. And to, to that point, to ask this question, have you noticed any change or uptick in the amount of earthquakes that are happening on either side of the, either the subduction zone or on the other side where this one occurred? Yeah, no, we really haven't. This is this one falls well within what we would consider to be sort of normal levels of activity. Again, it's a bigger earthquake than we've seen in a few years, but a few years is nothing uh, on the scale of kind of, you know, geologic time, right? Um, or even earthquake time. So uh, we've seen nothing to indicate any sort of change from a typical background level of activity. I don't want anybody to be concerned about that at this point. Okay, we'll great. talk about it if there is reason for concern in the future, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Anything else that you think is very important for, for the public to know just about this earthquake or the earthquakes in general that take place off of the coast there? Uh, I think the main thing to say is that these kinds of events are a reminder that fortunately doesn't hurt anybody, but reminds us that we live in an earthquake-prone region. Uh, earthquake hazards are real, so people should be aware of that from the point of view of safety in your house. Uh, having an earthquake, you know, uh, go kit and uh, kind of emergency plan with your family. Um, looking at securing things that could fly around um, in your workplace or your home or your school or whatever. Um, just be safe about earthquakes. Be, be prepared. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate your time and uh, and keeping everybody informed. And that's why I wanted to get this get this out there. And uh, you were able to do that for us. So thank you very much. Great. Thank you for calling today. I'm happy to talk anytime. And and for everybody who's watching, this is Fox 12 Now. We're live streaming here out of the Fox 12 Oregon newsroom, and we do this throughout the afternoon. And we try to bring you breaking news like this, or at least get information out there as people are finding out about this earthquake. And obviously, as Harold said, it's nothing to be concerned with right now, but a good reminder that we do live in an earthquake neighborhood. We do have more coming up, so I will be back here in just a few minutes. And again, we are live streaming on our YouTube channel at kptv.com, under the Fox 12 Now tab, and on the Fox 12 Oregon app. I will talk to you in a few. I'm Greg Nibbler. This is Fox 12 Now.